Hello and welcome to a Believing Heart podcast where I talk about video games and the like. I'm your host, Mario Waith. Find me across the internet all at Mario Waith. I'm on Tumblr, co-host, or still Twitter, as well as YouTube if you want to see my YouTube videos or if you want to find the audio version of this podcast that's on anchor.fm slash Mario Waith. Anyway, how's it going? First new episode of... The year, I've decided to do a little rebrand. These are no longer numbered episodes, so welcome to your podcast episode for January 4th, 2023. It is wild that it is already 2023. That's one of them sci-fi years. I mean, Blade Runner was already four years ago, which is a little weird to think about, but that's beside the point. But hey, but speaking of movies, this podcast is not going to be about video games this week. So in the run-up, I have been preparing a lot for my first, really the first video I've actually worked on on a regular schedule for ever since Mario in Review started, by the way, Mario in Review. Every other week, I'm reviewing a Mario game that resumes in two weeks, or you can find all the videos I've already done linked in the playlist in the description. But that has to go on pause for just another week because this Saturday I'm posting my Game of the Year video, which I've been writing and uh, working on. I've got mostly a full script done, so I'm look forward to that on Saturday. I think I played some pretty good games, although I kind of wish I could have gotten to others. I mentioned that mentioned those all in that video, but I'm not going to talk about video games at all. I've played a little bit, but I'll, I'll catch up on that next week. I want to talk about this week about the other stuff that I consumed last year in 2022. Or in this case, it'll be mostly, mainly just my favorite mu- favorite movies and TV shows from 2022. So I've got this spreadsheet that I keep open on here. I've watched, uh, what is that? 14, or at least started 14 television shows, and I watched 26 movies. And that's that's pretty decent, I guess. In the past, I've had a goal where I wanted to watch a movie a week, so 52 movies in the year. And then I had the idea, well, I want to watch two movies a week, 104 movies in a year. And this year, I didn't set that goal at all with Mario in review and the YouTube stuff I've been doing and just generally wanting to play more video games as of late. I'm actually a little surprised I managed to get to 26, which is roughly about one every other week. I didn't actually watch one every other week, and I'll get to that in a second, but I I watched a decent amount of movies, obviously not a cinephile or anything. And so first I'm just going to read through the 26 movies and kind of tell you roughly when I watched them. So the first movie I watched in the year was on the 16th of January, and I watched Encanto with my family. Then I watched the latest My Hero Academia movie, World Heroes Mission, on the 23rd, that same month, also with the family. Now, not with my family, because it would be a little weird. I rewatched all of the Evangelion rebuilds, so 1.11, 2.22, 3.33, all of those were in late January, and then very early early February, I watched 3.0 plus 1.0, Thrice Upon a Time. Ain't it wild that Evangelion's finished? Still a little weird. Then also with the family I watched when Marnie was here. I'd never seen that Ghibli movie before. It was it was pretty good. I watched Spider-Man No Way Home, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, Spider-Man was in March. Sonic the Hedgehog was in uh, April. Mid-April, I, watched, I finally got to the theater. I think this is the one movie I watched in theaters this year where I watched everything all at once. In May, I watched The King's Man Draft Day, The Keep Manhunter, so I just got in a real kick. I watched two movies on the 22nd of May. Then in June, I only watched one, Doctor Strange in the Mom, or Multiverse of Madness, but I think it's funny if you just short it down to Mom. Alright, that was up for June. For July, I watched, very early July, I watched three movies three days in a row. The Batman 2022, The Last of the Mohicans, and then Sing 2, also with family. And then I didn't watch anything else until October, where also in quick succession, I watched The Thing, The Thing from Another World, Heat, LA Takedown, and The Insider. Then a couple weeks later in November is when the Weird Al movie came out, so I watched Weird, the Al Yankovic story. And then in December, early December, I watched Rogue One again after coming off of Andor. And then I watched Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery just about a week ago now. That one's a few days, it feels like a lot 
I guess five days, five days ago now I watched that one. That was the last movie of the year. Overall, 21 of those I had never seen before, with a total of 26. Now, originally, I was going to watch... I was going to make... I, the reason I watched all of the Evangelion rebuilds is because I wanted to make a video, a review video of all four of those and kind of analyze what they did and how they closed out the series. And then I just got intense writer's block. My film critique muscles are very non-existent, I would say, and I just couldn't figure out how I wanted to write those scripts. Maybe, I think, or that script. I think I was going to fit it all into one video. I like, I like that series, and I like the fourth one a lot. I just couldn't figure out what I wanted to say with it. This will also come back a little bit, but when Marnie when is here was cute. Spider-Man No Way Home, I was, I was pretty angry at. First of all, it was hilarious that Spider-Man got the idea to go see Doctor Strange because he saw a wizard duck Christmas decoration. Like, someone wrote that for the movie, and they couldn't come up with anything better. Someone wrote that down as a temporary scene, and then nobody else could think of a better way to signify that Spider-Man wanted to go see... Doctor Strange. So they look like a they he looks at a duck Christmas it's so stupid. That's the only part of the movie I laughed out loud because of how ridiculous it was. And the movie is just stolen valor. I heard it recently described as it's just stolen valor. The movie in itself, based off of the based off of the stakes that were set up in the previous two Spider-Man movies, it's nothing. The only reason anybody cares about that movie is because it steals the villains from the first two Spider-Mans. It steals the Tobey Maguire villains, it steals the Andrew Garfield villains, and they're the only reasons that the movie has any stakes. It's it's really frustrating. It's also really frustrating how many people are like, oh, it's the best Spider-Man ever. It's not! You're completely forgetting multiverse, not multiverse of madness, uh, Spider-Verse is there. What are you talking about? No Way Home is fine. I've really soured on Marvel at all. You might notice I haven't watched any other Marvel. Oh, I guess I watched one other Marvel this year, which I'll, I'll just get to it now. Doctor Strange and the Mom, I thought was all right. The first one, it's better than the first. It was nice when Sam Raimi was able to get a little bit of Sam Raimi in there. But they just didn't do as much as I wanted. Again, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is a lot better take on the multiverse. I'm so excited for these next two movies for that series. And also Everything Ever All at Once also did a much funner take on a multiverse. Speaking of, I, I liked Everywhere, Everywhere, Everything Everywhere All at Once quite a bit. It is the only movie I watched in theaters this year. Of course, I've been very COVID-hesitant. So it's taken me a lot to get out to theaters, and apparently it was that. I wanted to watch it. I watched it alone in a nearly empty theater with my mask on the whole time. So it wasn't the most optimal of viewing conditions, but I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, Honestly, I think I wasn't disappointed by it, but it definitely didn't live up to to the expectations that a lot of other people set around it. Again, I love, I really liked the movie. Maybe Love is Strong. It's like not my favorite movie ever. It's, I'm not going to think about it too much after, but I had a really good time in the theater. I, oh, wait, no. I also watched Sonic the Hedgehog 2 in theaters. And I watched them almost a week, two weeks apart. So what, what am I even talking about? Either way, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was also all right. It was fun seeing the little references. Their weird scene in Hawaii was off, but it, it was, it was fine. The King's Man, I finally got around to watching the Kingsman prequel. What a wild movie. When it is the Kingsman, it was pretty fun, but it took a little bit too long to get there. And it was also it was just it was just there was some really weird stuff in there. There's a post credit Hitler tease scene, which is just wild. And the pacing was a bit off. It it was a little bit more World War One prequel and less Kingsman that I wanted. World War prequel set during World War. It was a little too. It was more World War One docu drama, fantasy docu drama, and less Kingsman than I wanted. But it, it was an interesting time. 
I'm also wa- I also watched a lot of Michael Mann stuff, following along with the Waypoint Plus series Manhunting. I'll just run through those uh, pretty quickly. The Keep was bad. Manhunter, really good. I liked that one a lot. Last of the Mohicans, all right. It was it was pretty good. I liked it less than Manhunter. I liked it less than Thief, which I watched last year. Uh, Heat, pretty entertaining. I liked that one. L.A. Takedown, a lot worse. It's just a lot worse version of the Heat. But Heat, he was pretty darn good. And The Insider, I really liked. I think I wanted to really like. I think I watched it with a bad headspace on that one. I also want to say when I started watching The Insider, I was getting physically angry at my computer. Because the night before, or just recently before, four days prior, I watched LA Takedown. And I was able to bring over VLC Media Player onto my TV, make a full screen, and watch it. And this time, it didn't let me. It had the taskbar at the bottom unless my other two monitors were on. And it was incredibly infuriating, and I just was having not that great of a day beside that. So I sat down, a little angry, watched it, and recognized how good it was. I should have rewatched that. This, that's when I, sh- I should go back to a rewatch. I, I think I would walk away liking it more. Because I didn't like it. I recognized there was a lot of really good quality skill making in that movie. I just couldn't get it. I just, I just couldn't appreciate it. Weird Al was pretty good. I I love Weird Al. I think they did a really fun thing with the movie where they basically just ignored Weird Al's history completely and just did whatever they wanted with it. It was a good time. Sometimes comedies would be better if you're watching with other people, and I don't really have that when I'm watching it alone in my room. But I had a real good time. I love Weird Al. It's, it's real good. Rogue One is probably not my least favorite of the Disney Star Wars movies, but it's also not my most favorite. There, it has some, it has a lot of problems, specifically with pacing and CG characters and character motivations in general. And I'll get to it more when I get to Andor. But it, it was a nice, it was nice, it was a nice way to cap off season one of Andor. Glass Onion, I liked a lot. I didn't like it as much as Knives Out. In fact, the whole partway through the movie, I kind of thought, huh, I'd kind of like to watch Knives Out again. That was a real good movie. I did like a lot what Glass Onion did. I think it got better at the halfway point when the twist happens. But it was it was good. I enjoyed it a lot. And the only thing I skipped, I think, is uh that I want to talk about is The Thing. Which, oh my gosh, The Thing is probably... Yeah... The Thing is the best movie I watched this year easily. I had never seen it before, so this is my first time. I watched it alone at night, and I usually don't watch horror movies, but I knew, I just knew The Thing was going to be good. And, oh my goodness, that movie was great. And I actually watched it in October, which was thematically appropriate. I, I don't even, I don't, again, my movie muscle is not that great. It's just a fantastic time wonderful practical effects. I loved how all the characters clashed with one another. Even stuff I had, I had had spoiled for me. I had had all the I had had the whole movie spoiled for me before I even watched it. And I but I was still so able to appreciate what that movie did. Just a fantastic time. And that's mostly it for the movies I want to talk about. Who knows how many movies I'll watch this year. Right now, I've watched none, but of course, it's also only the third for me. Uh, Fourth for when this posts. Anyway, let's move on to television shows. Now, I looked at this, and I now looking at this, I was like, oh my gosh, that came out this year? Book Boba Fett was not good. There was a couple good episodes. There was a good episode of Mandalorian in there, and then a middling episode of Mandalorian in there. And then the rest was just Book of Boba Fett. And they tried doing some stuff with that, but overall, that entire series was just a whiff. Honestly, they should have just kept him as a side character in Mandalorian, and it would have been so much better. Oh, he's the Daimo now. Thanks, Mando, for showing us that. We don't need to see how he has clawed his hand out from the sand like they talked about in a Parks and Recreation episode that for a, an over-nerdy Car- Patton Oswalt's narr- narration or dialogue. Jeez, oh gosh. I liked the bikers. They were goofy in a fun way. 
A lot of people hated the bikers. I think they they could have been used better. I think they were funny. I also watched Miami Vice, also a part of the Michael Mann stuff, at least the first season and one episode in season two. That is not a good show. I I got so tired partway through. I wanted to just keep watching to try to watch most of the episodes that were going to be covered on the Waypoint podcast. And it was hard. It was really hard. At a certain point, I just started playing games during it. It just could not hold my attention at all. Similarly, I also watched Crime Story, my, one of Michael, Man, Michael Mann's second TV show. Season 1 starts off alright, and then it gets a little worse, and then Season 2 was not good. Apparently, it came out during a writer's strike, which certainly wouldn't help. That one is notable to me because I got my mining skill cape in RuneScape while watching Crime Story. Or at least, I got a lot most of the way there. Or the final the majority of the final stretch of the way there while watching Crime Story because I was so bored and said I just started playing RuneScape. Moving on to some lighter stuff, The Owl House Season 2 Part 2 and the first episode of Season 3 came out. It's such a shame how Disney execs butchered The Owl House because that show is such a joy. There is so much stuff I wish they could have done with Season 3 and it's so obvious even with this first episode how much they've had to cut out. But I'm really enjoying it. I usually don't watch children's shows, but The Owl House is really doing it for me. Speaking of children's shows, Obi-Wan Kenobi came out. Now, I hear this actually a, a director's cut. Maybe not, not not a director, but someone made a fan edit of this movie to... Or the series to make it more of a movie, and it fixes a lot of the pacing issues. Because Obi-Wan Kenobi, the television show, had some moments. I, that last episode, the parts that you could see that were properly lit, had some really good stuff, and there was some good stuff peppered in throughout, but again, there's a lot of pacing issues as well for that. Now, this is going down as top three shows, top four shows I watched this year. Severance was fantastic. Oh my gosh, after hearing so much about this show, I, I, I visit my mom once a week, and we watch a TV show usually, and this is what started... I, I had said, I came one week and said, we should watch Severance. I've heard really good things. And my urge to watch more than one episode in a day and her refusal to, because it would just be too much, as she claimed, was just, was hard. Because every episode, you just want to know more and more about what these characters are going to come up to. What a fantastic series. To keep on high, on the highs, after we watched Severance, we watched through all of Better Call Saul. And for that one, I was like, okay, we can't do this weekly. I need to watch the next episode now. And so what we wound up doing for that one is we watched a couple episodes together, and then we would watch the rest of that season at home, and then we would meet back up to watch a couple more. Better Call Saul was really good. I don't think I'm the happiest with the last few episodes, but the journey to get there was just truly fantastic. I'll think about Lalo Salamanca a lot. I'll think about Cinnabon a lot. I'll think about it every time I see a Cinnabon, which is weird. And they they told a really good story about this comedic relief character from Breaking Bad. I did watch, we watched, we then watched a couple episodes of Breaking Bad, but then we moved into Andor, which, oh my goodness gracious, Andor is the best Star Wars we've gotten in decades. That show is so good. I can't even believe how well written these characters are, how tightly interwoven these storylines were for the th- every three episode arc. Every storyline makes sense, with maybe the exception of Mon Mothma, but she'll come up later, obviously. We just need to be introduced to her now. But Cassie and Andor, man. Right now, I have the Lego set. Uh, or not, the, I have the Lego set, the Lego characters from the Lego set staring at me. Because I just, I just wanted Andor. Luthan was also there, and I wanted my precious, precious little fail son, Cyril Karn. Oh, I love to hate that little guy. His horrible mother and his little cereal. I love this show. I love Andor so much. It's painful that we're like at least a year and a half away from season two. Oh boy, what a great show. That, Better Call Saul, Severance, 
those are like the best, those were the best dramas I watched this year. I think just because I'm me and my general hatred towards sequels and Disney, I would have to give it to Severance, even though I do also hate Apple, but that's beside the point. Severance is an original television show, and so that that has to be crowned number one in my book. Uh, uh, I also watched The Rehearsal, which is the other great show. So in the comedy section, the comedy that is making you cry a little bit section by the end, The Rehearsal is fantastic. Nathan Fielder, what a wonderful, (laughs) what a wonderful man. A very funny man as well. I can't, I watched Nathan for You for the first time last year, and the announcement of the rehearsal couldn't have come at a better time. And I so excitedly watched every episode, and every episode truly blew my mind at what that man was doing. And I'm so excited, I'm so happy in this nebulous time where HBO Max is going through some discovery problems. At least season two was confirmed and I hope they make it I hope it gets pushed through and not quietly cancelled later because it is truly fantastic comedic somewhat reality television Nathan Fielder is so good at this alright one more bad I watched the Halo series not great And then I started watching Dragon House, or what as more people would refer to as House of the Dragon, the Game of Thrones prequel series. I'm enjoying it. I it's it hasn't gripped me as much as like the game the Song of Ice and Fire books did back when I was high school. It hasn't gripped me as much as the Game of Thrones did, in part, because that those final couple seasons of Game of Thrones really burned me. And it's taking it's taking a lot for me to fully get involved into Dragon House. And also, I don't like the pacing. I don't like the pacing of Dragon House. I think it is, everything is just moving so much quicker than I thought it would have. And I think it's to the show's detriment how fast this show is moving. But there's already a season two confirmed, so I've heard. I'm only six episodes into Dragon House. Well, we'll see how that goes. I'm enjoying it. I like the characters. I like seeing them involved with one another. But other than like the main cast of maybe five characters six maybe it's hard to really get involved in anyone else especially since since how quickly some people get killed off because that that's a game of thrones thing people people can just die and i want to be able to know the character before they get killed and multiple times in this series they just haven't done it which is not not my favorite thing either way i watched some pretty good things who even knows what this year will bring i think we're getting the new spider-man into the spider-verse sequel which that is a day one movie for me. Also a day one movie for me is the Mario movie because I am insufferable. I'm, uh, I'll I'll be there day one, Thursday night. Might have to also watch it again with my family later because you gotta watch it twice. I'll, I'll probably also make a video on that one. I also, uh, so yeah, I know I'm going to the theater at least twice this year. So we'll see how much more we'll get. Also how many more television shows we'll get. I'm excited for some of the animated Star Wars shows. We, I know we're getting more uh, Star Wars Bad Batch pretty soon. I just got the Lego set with Cad Bane in it. I'm excited to build that. That's beside the point, though. Either way, that is it for this episode. I'm excited to watch more things this year. I'm excited to make more videos, make more podcasts, and play more video games. And if you'd like to hear about any of that, go ahead and subscribe either on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Mario 8th, or you can find the audio version of this podcast on anchor.fm slash Mario 8th, where there's an RSS feed, or you can find all the links. It's on iTunes, it's on other things, or just good old-fashioned RSS feed. And if you'd like to follow me, I'll, of course, be talking about everything I do and maybe some more on Tumblr and co-host. I'll also continue to be using Twitter for promotion if you want to just go over there and see the links to the video or the podcast whenever they get put out. Or you can find the games that I'm currently playing as I'm playing them on ggapp.io. If you would like, you can leave a rating somewhere. I hear ratings on iTunes or maybe leave a comment on the YouTube version. Those I hear those things help the algorithms for whatever that does. So go ahead and do that if you'd like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.